In today's video, we will discuss about the famous British author Roald Dahl. He was born in the month of September, so that's why we will celebrate this month as his birth month. Okay, so let's start. In last video, we have discussed about the famous author Roald Dahl and uh, his famous books. Okay, and this week we will discuss about the famous characters that were created by Roald Dahl. That are without them, the books are incomplete. They are, they are the, all the characters are very famous, and in this video we will know about them. The enormous crocodile. The enormous crocodile grinned, showing hundreds of sharp white teeth. For my lunch today, he said, I would like a nice, juicy little child. The enormous crocodile. The enormous crocodile is a beastly creature. He lives in the biggest, browniest, muddiest river in Africa. And he is just about the beastiest crocodile there. Where the not so big crocodile eats only fish, the enormous crocodile wants to eat everyone in the jungle. From the roly poly bird to muggle worm, the monkey. But his favorite food is all is a yummy tasting child. Charlie Bucket. This is Charlie. How did you do? And how did you do? And how did you do again? He is pleased to meet you. This line is from the book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie Bucket appears in two of Roald Dahl's stories, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which has been adapted into two films, an opera and a stage musical, and Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. And throughout all of his adventures, little Charlie keeps his cool. He really is, as Grandpa George says in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, a fine little fellow. On the big screen, the role of Charlie has been played by Peter Ostrom in 1971's Willy Wonka and the Char Chocolate Factory and Freddie Highmore in Charlie and Chocolate Factory in 2005. Aunt Spiker Aunt Spiker was lean and tall and bony and she wore steel rimmed spectacles that fixed onto the end of her nose with a clip. She had a screeching voice and long, wet, narrow lips. It is from James and Giant Peach. Aunt Spiker appears in Roldal's James and the Giant Peach, his first famous children's story. She and her sister Sponge live with their nephew, James Henry Trotter, who they treat horribly. The original story doesn't tell us whether she is related to James through his mother or father, but either way, she is not the sort of kind and cuddly aunt you might hope for. As the role describes her, she is a thin and spikish sort of a woman who is quick to anger and slow to care. Miss Spider I am not loved at all, and yet I do nothing but good. All day long I catch flies and mosquitoes in my webs. I am a decent person. Miss Spider from James and Giant Peach Poor old Miss Spider. She is such a helpful creature, and yet as she tells James in Roldal's James and the Giant Peach, Spider just aren't treated right. She even has to witness her poor old father being flushed down the plug hole by James' horrible Aunt Sponge. She is a good friend to James, though, and along with Silk One, it is her incredible threat that helps get them out of a stitchy situation abroad the pitch. In the 1996 animated film adaption of James and the Giant Peach, Miss Spider was voiced by Sushan Sarandar. 
the big friendly giant. I is the nice and jumbly giant. I is the only nice and jumbly giant in the giant country. I is the big friendly giant. I is the BFJ. What is your name? From the BFG. The BFG or to give him his full name the big friendly giant is one of Roald Dahl's best loved characters. He features in two of Roald Dahl's stories that is Danny the champion of the world and of course the BFG. In 1989 the BFG was adapted for a UK TV movie with David Jason voicing the big friendly giant. A new film version of the story directed by Steven Spielberg is planned for release in 2016 but however it is not possible to make. Little Billy Little Billy's mother was always telling him exactly what he was allowed to do and what he was not allowed to do from the mini pins. When we first meet him at the beginning of the mini pins, little Billy is bored. His mother has stopped him going out to play and most especially going to visit the forest of sea. But little Billy is a resourceful boy and he sneaks out when his mother was not watching, ignoring her warnings about the spectre and those terrible vermicious kidneys. There is no splitter, but in the forest, little Billy does indeed come across some ferocious beasts. He also meets the mini pins, teeny human like creatures who live in the trees, and that resourcefulness comes in very handy when he needs to get home past the dreaded cruncher. Ladybird or Ladybird? The numbers of spots that a ladybird has is simply a way of showing which brand of the family she belongs to. I, for example, as you can see for yourself, am a nine spotted ladybird. The quote is from James and Giant Peach and it is told by Ladybird. The ladybird or ladybug as she is known in North American editions of the book and in the 1996 film where the character is voiced by actress Jane Lips appears in Roald Dahl's first famous children's story James and the Giant Peach. She is a great friend to James during his adventures abroad the beach and her kind personality causes James to call her his greatest comfort since this trip began. She has 9 spots upon her wings and 400 children. The Oompa Loompas Of course they are real people, Mr. Wonka answered. They are Goomba Loompas. He is from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The Goomba Loompas feature in two of Roda's stories, Charlie and the Cho Chocolate Factory, which has since been adapted for two films, an opera and a stage musical, and Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. The Goomba Loompas are from Loompa Land which Mr. Wonka describes as a terrible place. Nothing but thick jungles infested by the most dangerous beast in the world. Hornswoggles and Snotswangles are those terrible wicked bank doodles, he tells Charlie Bucket and the other golden ticket winners. Sophie the BFG. No one is going to be worrying too much about me. That place you took me from was the village orphanage. We are all orphans in there. It is told by Sophie from the story The BFG. Sophie appears in Roald Dahl's much loved story The BFG, first published in 1982. 
she is kidnapped from her bedroom at the orphanage where she lives by the big friendly giant or the bfg for short after spotting him through her window one night the bfg was adapted for a uk tv film in 1989 with amanda root voicing the character of sophie a new film adaptation directed by steven spielberg is scheduled for release in 2016 sophie does not have a last name in the original story mrs tweet but the funny thing is that mrs tweet wasn't born ugly she would had a quite nice face when she was young the ugliness had a grown up on her ear by ear as she got older from the story the tweets mrs tweet is horrible as well as ugly and she is married to the equally nasty mr tweet the two of them spend all their time playing mean trick tricks on each other and on the other unfortunate people and creatures that they meet mrs tweet has a glass eye that she adds to mr tweet's water glass so he knows she has got her eye on him and a walking stick that mr tweet is with to convince her she has got the dreaded shrinks horrible as she may be mrs tweet is also the subject of one of roldal's best known books humpy dumpy humpy dumpy a gigantic creature was standing in the slimy boozy mud on the river bank it was humpy dumpy the hippopotamus it is from the enormous crocodile story Humpy Dumpy lives on the river bank next to the biggest browniest muddiest river in Africa alongside the horrible enormous crocodile who he tries to persuade not to eat the nearby children he foils the enormous crocodile's plan to disguise himself as a tree in order to snap up a juicy child The Enormous Crocodile was published in 1978 and was the first Roald Dahl story to feature illustration by Sir Quentin Bleek. Matilda Warmwood. Matilda Warmwood is the clever, brave, book-loving girl who gives her name to one of Roald Dahl's last published stories, Matilda. So clever is Matilda that by the age of four she has read all the children's books in her local library. By the time she begins school age at five, she has graduated to Charles Dickens and Rudyard Kipling. What's more, she can multiply large numbers with no trouble and can compose and recite line breaks with a barely a break. Her school teacher Miss Honey thinks she is a genius. Unfortunately, her parents aren't so impressed. Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood completely fail to appreciate her incredible abilities. But luckily for Matilda, this also means they never fail to fall for her tricks. Mr. Fox. On a hill above the valley there was a wood in the wood there was a huge tree under the tree there was a hole in the hole lived mr fox and mrs fox and they are four small foxes it is from the story fantastic mr fox mr fox is clever far too clever for his local farmers bogies buns and bean Still even a very clever and cunning fox sometimes get caught out and when those devious farmers finally locate the whereabouts of Mr Fox's home it puts him and his family in danger In 2009 director Wes Anderson's stop motion and animated 
adaptation of Fantastic Mr. Fox featured George Clooney as Foxy Fox in the film. His character was a newspaper columnist and the father of one son, Ash, as opposed to the four small foxes that appear in the original story. A nephew, Christopher's son, also lived with the family. Danny When I was four months old, my mother died suddenly and my father was left to look after me all by himself. It is told by Danny, the champion of the world. Danny is the little character in Roald Dahl's 1975 book, Danny, the champion of the world. He is also the narrator of the story, which follows the adventures and incidents by his young life living in a gypsy caravan next to the filling station where his beloved father works. In 1989, a film adaption of the story was released starring Samuel Irons as Danny. His father, Jeremy Irons, played Danny's dad, William. Billy Wonka Mr. Billy Wonka is the most amazing, most fantastic, the most extraordinary chocolate maker the world has ever seen. It was told by Grandpa Joe from the story Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Billy Wonka is extraordinary. He is a chocolate making genius who relishes nonsense. He can't abide ugliness in factories and he likes to make mischief even if that means talking to the President of the United States while pretending to be a man from Mars and he does in Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. This is how Roll describes Willy Wonka the very first time we see him in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And he is not just a genius with chocolate. Mr. Wonka is also a very well-traveled man, having been all the way to Lumpa Land and to the furthest reaches of outer space. On film, this iconic character has been brought to life by Ginny Wilder in the in 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and Johnny Depp, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in 2005.